Welcome back, Hunters! I'm the Survival of This, and we return to the Hunter Classic with our Timber Gold Expedition series. We are into Episode 8 now, and last episode, we just got a few rather decent-sized elk, I suppose. I'm still not exactly sure their trophy scores, but, I mean, going by the GM, it's been actually pretty rewarding, so... I'm going to use that as kind of like my guidestone for how well I've been doing. We're pretty close to the dredger down here in the southern ends of Timbergold Trails. And we're just going to get back onto the mainland of sorts and then keep going. Probably aim for like into the heart of this area. Because I know when we were here last time or around this area, we had a few wolf packs that were making a bit of noise and running around. So I'd like to see if I could maybe get those around us again. Or go into their territory. Uh, that was probably just the droppings from the other elk that was with the one here. And you know what? Let me just see if I can find a spot quickly to get across. Like, I do kind of wish they could make you so you could just swim easily or something like that. Oh, okay. Here's a joiner. Yeah, so back onto the mainland proper and we'll just go right through the bush. I'd probably recommend more sticking to the trails or that, but I feel like for how I've been doing, we could use a little bit of bush trekking. Let's get us our, out into the heart of the wild a bit more and see if we get more calls or more stuff picked up by the hunter mate as we're going out. Uh, there is a landmark up here I suppose I could work up first. Because since I'm already out here, I don't have to kill the usual bit of time on the runs to get to places, so that's nice. That's one of the things that made, like, doing the multiple episodes a very good thing. It always kind of seems like the first weekend is just your warm-up, settle in, get you prepared. Then the second episode of it is where you're more right into the action and back out into hunts. See, I'm going to just follow up here, see what this is, and then maybe I can try going to that spot there. Actually, or was I at that landmark when we had the werewolves active? I can't remember. But we'll at least go up north here and see what we might have. Like, if anything calls or is just walk out in the woods. I thought I heard something for a moment there. I do have first aid kits, right? Yeah, I, I do have a stack of 10. Okay. I thought I picked up some new ones just to have, so I am just want to make sure I do have them. Actually, I can't remember if I've been up this way or not. I feel like maybe I... I'm just losing my mind, I guess. That yeah, might happen. Well, 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 looks like this might pay off pretty nicely for us. I also should keep and watch on the lower right, because we might get a notification soon that the Sentilemnir is wearing off, or has worn off. I think we'll be close to half hour... Oh, not you. I know what that little squeaky call is, and I don't like it. Okay, so this might be more of a rifle takedown. Because I'm going to have male and female out coming my way. And as you guys have seen in the series, the females are basically the warning signs. They're the alarm system for all the males. They're the ones who investigate first, go in quickly, and... are kind of the idiots. Let's put it that way. They are not smart. But because of that, they can get alerted, and then the males are alerted, and they go running off. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm in an area with, like... Oh god, the grass is so tall here, I can't even see through it standing up. I think I'm also a little bit down a hill. Okay, I think that's... Yeah, that I think is the cow elk that... Oh, no, that's a male elk. Now, is it just you or are there any others? Oh. Okay, looks like you're with a couple of females, so you're... Actually, three females. I think maybe I'll try getting you while you're right in the open and just a nice, perfect shot. Oh, I am glad I took him when I did. There were a couple females right north of us, too. 
If you guys want to see elk this weekend, there was a herd of them. But yeah, that's why, as much as you want to say professional, focused, directed, bow-only hunts, bring some back up. It really, really takes the attention off to have another means of dealing with stuff like that. Like, it was basically an entire entourage of females around this guy. I don't think that means he was, like, very high scoring. I think he's probably going to be probably around the average for what we've been getting. I'm thinking maybe 40 to 45-ish GM. We'll see. Although, seems like he has a pretty wide uh, spread on him. Oh, actually, better than I thought he was. Not as good as the other one we took down with the rifle, but he's still a pretty decent score. Ah, he, deer was even posing, its, or the elk was posing itself for me. Well, yeah, it doesn't hurt just to, again, have backup or have yourself some options for how you want to deal with trying to take down certain animals. As much as I love the bow and arrow and I'd love to try to get every animal with it, it's also, have to admit, that's not always feasible or possible to do so. So, that's when you can lean back on the rifle and just enjoy yourself. But yeah, I don't know if I've actually been up to this spot or not. I feel like I might have been. We'll have to get up to the trail and actually see. Because I do see a building there. Or at least the top of one. Can't remember if I somehow looped my way around in the previous times I've been down in this area or not. I definitely can't think I came here during the werewolf act of, like, the Halloween event. God, can you imagine trying being the, like, the force like this with those active? You have to have, like, godlike reflexes be able to take care of them because of how fast they are and how they, like, circle and try to navigate towards you. I feel like I have been here. Either that or there's been another spot just like this on... Timbergold. Actually, I think there are a few little places. I mean, like, ah, uh, let me zoom in. I thought there was, like, a little mining town of sorts up here as well. Well, it's not landmarked. Hmm. Or point of interest, or whatever. Yeah, I don't think I'll really find anything here, but at least it's something to spot and come across. Yeah, I can't... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just me making all this sound. Thought for a second, just like the way the grass is crunching, that maybe something else was here too, but... Okay. Now we'll use the road to get out of here. Oh, actually, hang on. Is that an elk? No, it's just, again, the way certain shadows and that can kind of, like, stand out a bit almost makes it look like there's something there when there isn't. So where will this go? Actually, this is a pretty good road to stick on. We were... Yeah, we basically came pretty close to it, because this was the area where we got our mule deers. Where we set up the blind by the water and slowly pulled the th three in. Was it three or two? Oh, I can't remember now. I think it was we pulled three in towards us. But safety's sake, I'll just say two, so that way people don't think, Oh, he's bragging, he's good. I've never been good at the Hunter Classic. I've been tolerable, I think, but I don't think I've ever been good. You always keep yourself humble. That way you don't get too big for yourself and then fall right flat on your face. I'll just walk along this for a while and see what else we might be able to hear or come across. We might get into mule deer territory again, so we may hear some of those. The wolf packs are the ones I want to really keep my eyes out for, or I guess ears open and eyes open. Because it would be nice getting more wolves. That's kind of, I think, the main draw when it comes to, like, Timbergold Trails as a reserve is... It's one of the few where... Or is it the only you can hunt wolves on? I mean, there are grizzly bears, but I mean, they're kind of just like brown bears, so there's nothing, I think, too special about that. There are the bighorn sheep, and then there are also the doll sheep of White Rhyme. I guess the timber wolves kind of are the unique animal for Timbergold Trails to go after. 
And I mean, the reserve mascot is a wolf. So I guess it kind of would make sense. Yes, yeah, just a lot of elk tracks, but I kind of knew this would, well, generally this area would have them. That's why I thought this would be a possible elk and wolf weekend. I actually might get a good sighting opportunity coming up this hill here. Actually, you know, one thing I haven't heard yet, or haven't even seen circling, are any ravens. Oh, okay, there's definitely somebody up there. Oh, that's just a cow elk. Ah, she can be left alone. Ooh, okay, how far off? You guys are a ways off, so I think this might be a good opportunity to set up the blind. Just let me back off a bit. Okay, that's the grunt call, that's the scent eliminator. Okay, gotta equip the e-caller again. Now, I think maybe as right around here might be good. No, no, I gotta right stand still, place it. Once it's down, I can start moving. Yeah, let me just get inside here quickly. Now, they are quite a ways off, but I think they might be able to be called in. And maybe just in case, I'll use another scent eliminator here. I know it hasn't... I don't think it's worn off yet, but it probably was going to get very close to. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll just do that for now, and we'll just wait out and see if maybe we can get them brought out. Because the difference here from when I used the line last weekend is that I don't think I start... is Last weekend, I think I was too close and I startled the wolf with placing it. But this distance, I think, should be enough that they don't know I'm here. But hopefully they'll just pick up on the call and come in to investigate. I mean, that's the plan. We'll see how it actually goes. It could be I'm still too far out. I don't know. Not entirely sure how far the distance might be for them. And then there is also, if you don't want to spend the full amount for the e-caller and the wolf plug-in, there is also just a kind of manual caller, too, like the deer and the elk callers I've used. It's called the Elk Calf Caller. I'm trying to remember who was it that uh, recommended it. Was it Etutwamala? Or it might have been the Lone Gamer. Was that something else? I think that was actually an elk running way out there. I thought it was almost like a bird at first, but maybe it was an elk actually running off from the wolves. Yeah, we'll give it another moment or two and see. I was hoping I might have spotted at least like something coming in. Even if it was a bit of a ways out. But yeah, I don't see anything right now. Oh. Okay, well, I'm glad I said I'll give it a moment or two because there was a wolf. I might even be able to get the second one back if I stay patient here enough. Yeah, so much for thinking nothing was coming in. Just whoosh, whoosh. Oh, well, there she is. See, that's one of the things you have to remember about the predator calls. Is these aren't like mating calls. These are what you're calling in expects or might be trying to get a meal. So they might rush in for you. Okay, so she's out there. Um, I... Oh, hello. That's a mail call, isn't it? It is.
Yeah, we'll turn you off for now. Let me actually... Okay, you know what? No, I should be able to... Yeah, so it's kind of close. I'm going to spray this here. And now get back into here. Just so that way, hopefully he doesn't... Like, if he does come in, he's not drawn directly towards me. He's drawn kind of in front, so I can get another good chance. And before I forget, because I've done it in the past, we'll take that off. There we go. Yeah, so the elk, he'll, or the wolf, he'll be fine just sitting there for now. We'll see about getting this guy, and then we can just dismantle the blind, take the two trophy, or, well, I shouldn't say trophies, but take the two we've taken down, and then move along. Then I actually think, I have to double check, I think these three towers are actually all deployable. Like, I can take them down and store them. I think that's what they are. Yeah, I was quite surprised how quickly those two wolves, like, rushed out, like... I almost thought they were going to run right past me with how quickly they came out. Oh, I might also... I just thought about it too. I'll try and get this guy out, or this elk. I might draw fe the females I scared off from the other group here too. But we'll have to see. Uh, so far I can't see. I don't think he's like the other small one that we had seen earlier. Like, or, well I should say, the end of the last episode. Because that guy went running off. But I think he stuck more almost like along the waterline. I think he went back over this way, not up here. But we'll see. If you have the time and patience, this kind of uh, hunting style can really pay off for you. I'm just not... Oh, okay, there's another call. It's from... Oh, he hasn't really come in at all. Huh. See, I thought with spraying that, that might have wanted to bring him in, but maybe not. Let's take a quick look over this way again. Now, debating whether I should stay here, I should try going to meet him. You know what? If I get another call and he hasn't really approached, I think I'll go try to meet him. Because, like, staying here... I might have a bit of a setup here, but again, if I don't know the animal's actually coming in, this all is kind of for nothing. And if I go trying to find him, I could even just spot him from a distance, and if he's worth, like, guarantee I want to get him down, I can just use the rifle. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to collect this guy. Ooh, how did this one go through you? No, oh, it says through the lung, not really... Ah, eh, not too bad. I know it. Yeah, he's the first wolf of the weekend. We'll take uh, a trophy shot with him. There we go. And we'll dismantle this. I'm going to try to work my way kind of up towards where he, that elk was calling from. Like, I think it should be far enough out. Dismantling the ground blind won't have startled it or anything. Okay, actually, those are tracks from this guy. So that was... came across as, like, the second one we picked up from him. Wow. 
No, that's not him. That's our... Oh no, he is close. I don't think that's him though, is it? Maybe it is him. I don't see any other movement, and that did get registered as quite close. Huh. I mean, I know the low-scoring animals tend to be more vocal. You won't really have many trophy ones make a lot of calls so that way they can, like, give themselves away where they are. But it didn't look like he was actually, like, doing a call animation when the sound was going out. But I also don't think I kept my eyes on him enough to really be sure. Yeah, I think maybe that was from this guy. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, it was. Every node here is red, so... I didn't actually think that would be a good shot. I thought that was a bit too far back on him. But it did take him down instantly, so let's take a look at him. Yeah, he's not a very good scoring one, though. No, oh, it wanted to count. That was still a pretty good shot, so no trophy shot. But we'll still take him. Now, let's go snag our e-caller and see if we can get something else for... ...this episode. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get a couple. Okay, so he's still up there. But yeah, I didn't think that was actually him calling all this time. I think he is the one we spotted down a bit south of the lake there, and maybe because of... Both rifle shots, he got scared all the way up here. Okay, there it is. There's our little e-caller. Pick you up and take you with us. And we'll go along the trail further. So, what have we had so far this weekend? I think it's been three elks, first episode. Elk, wolf, elk? Something like that, maybe? Well, we'll follow along the road for a while and see what else we might hear or come across. But yeah, it's been pretty successful, and I do like switching it up a little bit with both, like, stalking going close, or setting up and having plans actually go as planned, and then come in for ya. It's been a pretty nice experience being able to do so much in these episodes. Yeah, I think that's that was just her running off. I don't know if we'll actually see her again, or she'll just be hightailed back into, like, the woods. Considering, again, I was just not expecting... The first one completely caught me off guard, and then the second one just surpassed her, and I was like, Ooh, well, which one do I go for? Okay, well, I know that's just a female elk call. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. It makes... Uh, see, I don't know if I'd be able to reliably find the pumas on... Or, I, well, I guess mountain lions, cougars, whatever you want to call them, because it does have so many names it goes by. I don't know if I'd be able to reliably find them for a weekend or not. Because, like, they have a pretty wide area they will, like, be around in. Like, I think even down this... Or maybe not. I'm trying to remember where I came across some Puma Calls. I know way up when we did the Big Horns, we got one there. We got one just a bit northeast of the tent. That's just trying to think. If there was an area that had, like, a reliable and I knew... I could get more than one per weekend, I'd probably try going for that. But I think... Maybe what I'll do is I'll start from the tent again... And try going around this area, because I think I can find some there. I'd like to get at least one more Puma, because that's the only thing we don't have multiple of from Timbergold Trails yet. Although, who knows, maybe we're walking, we'll hear a call from one all of a sudden. I 
Oh, I wonder if I should try getting one with a bow. I kind of feel like I'm setting myself up for failure because of how difficult that sounds. But you never know. Maybe it would actually happen. I mean, I've gotten a wolf with the bow, and I didn't realize I'd... I didn't think I'd get that as, like, something I could do. Ah, we'll see. I'll see what happens with the rest of this episode and how I'm feeling next weekend. Oh. Okay, I'm... Now it's in a trot, though, so it wasn't actually like it was scared, so I think it was just it moving around the map for something. Uh, top of another hill, but I don't really see anything too interesting from here. Yeah. Do I stick to the road or should I tr You know, I'll stick to the road because it looks like it gets pretty close to that uh, lake there. Or maybe it's just a big pond. Eh, whatever it is. It comes pretty close to there so then I can do a bit of like glassing once we get to that. You got another track here from something. No, I think these are wolf tracks. Like that piece of crap there looks like it's dog. Yeah. Okay, so they were chasing after that elk. I thought something was a bit weird for like how I'd seen the coloration there. Like, I don't think you guys would have picked it up because I don't... I can't render the videos in high enough quality and YouTube kind of craps on me with the video codec. But while we were in the blind... Oh, that was a grizzly track. While we were in the ground blind, I thought I saw... Oh, actually, that's another male elk call. Holy crap, that's... How close is that? It's like that, I thought I would have been able to see him. Oh, there you are. Hey, he's not bad for a specimen. You know what, let me see if I can bring him in to me. I guess I did get my elk weekend after all, because we've definitely gotten a good amount of them. And I think he just replied back, so that probably is a good sign he'll be on his way. Usually if you get vocalizations back of... Nope, Grizzly Bear was fleeing. If you can get vocalizations back from animals when you put calls out, it either means they're receptive to you, or they might actually be more... They might lean more to wanting to come and investigate. So we just gotta see, is he going to be one to shout back, or is he going to come and... Oh, it looks like he's turned this way, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to call anymore, I'm just going to let him come in his own pacing. I'm going to try to get into a position where I'm going to have a better side shot than if he's like coming straight on. Always try to get to the broad side of the animals. It's just because it makes it so much easier to try for the lung shots. Even the heart shots. Like, there's probably a pretty good way of reliably knowing where to aim for the heart shots on the animals. But I still think I'd lean to the broad side is just a lot easier. I can't tell what score he'd be. I'm thinking... Not too bad of one, whatever it is. Yes, yeah, so you know, I'm just going to go down for a bit longer. Try to let him get a bit closer to us and then spring up. Yeah, that should be more than enough. Okay, that I think should have been a lung or heart shot. Just want to give it a moment. I wonder if it's maybe a little too low. Well, we'll find out in just a moment. Okay, I think we're good enough distance off. Come on, be a good shot. Lung shot, lung shot, lung shot. Lung shot. I don't know how far he'll be able to get with that, but at least we got another animal going down eventually. And it looks like he might take us towards the water, too, so that's even better.
But yeah, try to go for the broad side. It makes it so much easier trying for the lungs and the heart. If you can probably figure out, like, the proper height for where the heart should... See, that's what I expect from a lung shot, is that he does get to run, but doesn't make it very far. Like, this is probably one of the smallest drop distances that it's had, or I've had, using the bow and arrow. If it's not an instant drop, up, that is. Oh, and... You want to try going after the grizzly bear with a bow and arrow? Because I'm kind of leaning to that. Oh. We spooked something else off, too. So I better be careful. I don't know what that was, but I feel like it could have been another bear. It looked like it was maybe elk size for what went running. Uh, I don't know if the bear will stay still long enough for us to get in nice close to get what I need. But we can try and see. Maybe I'll keep the rifle out until I can get to... Oh, do, 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 do. I mean, one nice thing about the Hunter, both classic and called wild, is that you don't lose the animals. Oh, maybe it was a mule deer instead, because, like, we got you stuck up there. Oh, you're just a little twig buck, though. You're not worth it. I mean, one thing, too, is the Hunter, both classic and called wild. They do have... Okay, just an elk. Yeah, of course, it's always towards the end of the second episode that everything wants to start coming to life. I'm hoping that grizzly decided to stop for a little while so I can close the distance here and try. Because, like, that would be an interesting way to end this weekend off, and that would be... Quite a topper to everything so far. Ooh, I heard it. Oh, I can't see it yet. I think... Oh, no, it's out there. Okay, so I can... I still cover some distance before we'll... Be dealing with him. I yeah, it's kind of weird that the water's washing up here. But again, there are some bugs and some things with the series that have just persisted through all these years. It is still the best hunting game pairing out there right now. There is another game called Hunting Simulator 2 that went out. I don't want to say recently, but it's been released one of the newer version newer games, but I've never gotten a chance to try just because it seemed like it was pretty high for what the pricing was on it. Okay, we're at the top here. Where's the bear? Okay, she decided to double back. Hey, big mama! You want to stop for me for a moment? Like, look how close we are to the grizzly right here. Uh, well, you know what? I'll take it. Maybe I can get, like, through the back of the lung. Um. Yeah, I think something's a bit buggy with that. I mean, I was expecting a bear to swim. Not exactly run through the... Uh-oh. I think she's coming for vengeance. Oh lord, she's coming. You wanna have a go? I don't know if I actually got her or not with the second one. Okay, you know what? I think this is job for the rifle, because she's gonna keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I let her, she would have just ran right off for who knows how long. 
I gotta check, though. I almost think I did get the second one on her, because I didn't see a splash in the water. But I thought the turn... Like, that's one of the most bizarre things I've seen in the Hunter Classic for all the time I've been playing. Run out to the middle of the lake, 180, come back, but then just, like, stand there instead of picking you up. <laughs> yeah, there's some weird stuff that happens at times, man. Let's see her. Did I get her with both arrow shots or not? Um, I did. So the first shot actually went through her right lung. I guess maybe she didn't go down because she was in the water that... Yeah, like, it's a bit weird. I'm just going to resume the game because, like, that turned into one hell of a mess of a finish there. But we will bring this episode of our Timber Gold Trails Expedition series to a close right here. We'll do one more weekend with two episodes, and then we'll move on to another expedition series. And let me just hide that and enjoy this beautiful view to send us off with. And get the track note out of there. There we go. Thank you guys so much for joining me in another episode of the series. If you liked the video, be sure to give a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave comments right down below. Or even if you have suggestions for the next uh, reserve I should do the expedition series on, start leaving them now, because again... The earlier you get it in, the more I can build up and see what the focus wants to be for the next one, and go from there. But until I do see you in that episode, Hunters and Survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.